World leaders have called for restraint as Israel has vowed revenge against Iran following the weekend's attacks. Uh, their military chief has said the country is still considering its steps but confirmed the attack will be met with a response. Speaking on Patrick Christie's programme last night, former Armed Forces Minister James Heapy warned Israel to show restraint. What could have been a sort of Pearl Harbor type moment was 99% repelled. And, they, and, the, and as a consequence, gives Israel the opportunity to not respond and, and escalate. Now, Israel may still choose to do so. I think the UK should be absolutely clear in our resolve to continue to be willing to defend Israel from these mm. attacks. Always our priority must be to try and... So you support them in turn. defensive action, less so in offensive action. Yeah, I, look, I think, I think I mean, your question was, should we be making a commitment to go with the Israelis? I mean, I, I, I don't think we should. Okay. Well, let's get the thoughts of the US political analyst, Eric Ham. Good morning to you, Eric. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, lots of tension here uh, in London, probably a very late night for the Foreign Office, wondering uh, what Israel's next moves are going to be. Do you think that Israel takes any notice of what President Biden says anymore? I do not. And I think what we just heard from that guest there, I think that's the thinking of a lot of people within the Biden administration, as well as many Americans. Uh, I think people are willing to stand with Israel if Israel is, in fact, attacked. But I think what we're seeing now is Israel and President Biden has made clear this was a win for Israel, given that this attack by Iran did very little inside of Israel. And now that the United States has made clear if Israel decides to go on the offensive, the United States will not, will not be a part of that. Nevertheless, what we're seeing in the United States is Congress is feverishly moving to try to move aid both to Ukraine and Israel as a result of this attack. And still, the Biden administration is continuing to try to put pressure on Benjamin Netanyahu, not only to de-escalate tensions, but also to not move forward with a military offensive in Rafah. All of those attempts at pressuring, cajoling, seem to be falling on deaf ears right now. Um, what about the row um, that's being had over here uh, about whether or not the IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, should be prescribed a terrorist organisation? It's dividing opinion here. I don't know if the same row is being had over the pond. Um, but in this country, at least, the, the Foreign Secretary, the Prime Minister, is saying, look, we're one of the few countries that has an embassy in Iran. I don't think the States has one. It's an important back channel. And that would uh, break down if we did prescribe them as terrorists. Is that a view that you share? No, I don't think that's something that we would see from the administration in Washington or even from uh, many uh, lawmakers in Washington uh, that this should actually take place. But I do think what, what is happening is uh, the United States has had an enormous amount of back channel uh, engagement with Iran. And so I think the United States will use every opportunity to do that. And I think if there is this designation, that would make it very difficult and could potentially cut off one of those key back channels that the United States sees as so vital. Uh, Eric, you believe there could be a silver lining in all of this so that would affect um, uh, Ukraine and um, uh, as well as what's going on in the Middle East? Oh, absolutely. In fact, we know that uh, the $60 billion aid package for Ukraine has been held up for quite some time now. and. After this attack, we now see Speaker Mike Johnson is, a, is now saying that he will bring both of these aid packages, uh, aid for Israel and aid for Ukraine, to the floor this week. Now, we know the Biden administration, as well as President Zelensky, has been pushing for these aid packages, and now it looks like it might happen. Now, of course, the Biden administration, we've heard from Admiral, Admiral Kirby saying that they do not want separate standalone packages. But it looks like that might be what happens here. And it's all very complex, given what we're seeing play out, because while there is ongoing tensions that are very real in the United States, I'm sorry, in the Middle East, there are still very thorny domestic political issues that the Biden administration is attempting to navigate here in Washington. OK, Eric, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed.